Good afternoon, everyone. Foremost, thank you, TEDx and SD College. I have a personal affiliation to SD College, interestingly enough. My grandfather, I come from a family of builders in Chandigarh, so my grandfather was involved in the building of this college. My father went ahead and did his graduation from this very college. My sister went ahead and did her graduation and post-graduation from this very college. And I did not get admission into this college. So thank you for finally letting me enter your auditorium on the other side of the dais. And I think that's worked enough well for me. And that is exactly what my topic for the day is. It's about the choices that I've made. And thank God I chose the wrong. Let's talk about choices. There are two types of choices that we have in life. One, that are beyond our control. That being the family that you're born into, sometimes the relationships that you get into, things that you do not have control on, the religion that you are born into unless you get it changed. The other choices are the ones that you think you take but are eventually shaped by the society around you. Your career, your friend circle, your life goals. And these are the choices that I think we end up believing to be taken in the right spirit, but are often taken in the wrong term. And that is exactly what I'm going to be talking about. I'm going to be playing a little game with you. I'll be stuck. Are you going to be next time? So yeah, so there's a little game that I want to play with you guys. The game's called What Are The Odds? I'm going to give you clues about certain people that we are very well versed off in life but do not know the real choices that made them into who they've become today. So can you tell this person, divorced, living on government aid, could barely afford to feed her baby, did not even have a computer, turned out to be one of the highest best-selling authors in this world right now, J.K. Rowling. This man born into a poor family with nine siblings worked at a chemist shop, slept on the roads and the pavements, but made a choice in life that wasn't technically safe. Today, we know him as one of the most celebrated actors in the country. A victim of sexual abuse delivered a baby at 14, yet finished her degree and started a new channel. Oprah. And can you guess this person? St stat uh, stammered in school, was bullied in school as well. At 21, got his spinal cord injury and the doctor told him never to dance again. The same or the conventional choice that he could have taken would have made him sit at home and not become who he is today. Let's cross him. Born with his legs aligned, he could not walk till the time he was 30. His only dream in life was something that involved mobility. He started his career at the backside of his household with his mother. Today, the guy is a mission-related chef, Vikas Khanna. What is common in all these people is what I want to bring my point. They perhaps did something more than this in their life. And they made the wrong choices. Now, when I say the wrong choices, let me clarify what the right choice according to society is. The right choice is often the safe choice. Go to school, get a good degree in college. Take a safe job and obviously in India, if you're not a doctor, an engineer or a proper MBA, you're a terrorist. So the only way you can go beyond this and follow your passion or your heart is when you make the wrong choice, but believe in itself. And that is exactly what I've done. So I'm going to be taking you through my own journey to tell you about how I made all the wrong choices and resultedly entered a college which denied me admission in the very first place to be standing on the dais. So thank God I chose the wrong. How it all began. The first step or the first mistake that I took was um, grade 10th ended and I had got a decent percentage in school which would have gotten me into a good school in the city but I wanted to do something different. I wanted to do IB. Now IB was a, a system of education that wasn't very well versed with the people of Chandigarh back in then. So I joined the hostel in Deradun. Certain things happened in that hostel uh, which involved certain green matters which are available in the hills, which shouldn't have been. And I got kicked out of that hostel. Nothing to be proud of, honestly. There was a mistake that I did, and I had two choices once I came back home. A, I did not have a school to go to, despite getting a very decent percentage in grade 10. Being kicked out of a hostel in grade 11, I had no school to go to. Parents back at home who did not understand where they went wrong. And you know how it is in Punjab, right? 
it's not your parents who come and question your abilities, it's the relatives who come and have butter chicken at your own very expense, sitting on your dinner table and questioning your parents and yourself sitting there and tell them, Mr. Kush nahi ho sakta. And I'm like, yes ma'am, mera kuch nahi ho sakta, you can very well take that butter chicken off and go from here. But that does not happen. So, complete failure had nowhere to go to and the only thing that I liked as a kid and had continued throughout even with my journey in school and hostel was reading. So naturally I thought, why not give writing a shot? I started writing a book. Important words that featured were, Lo kya kahe. These three words I believe have determined everyone's life choices for a really really long time. And we might not say it out loud but subconsciously these are the words that affect us. And to be honest, there is nothing wrong with it because we live in a society at the end of the day. But at the same time, when you live in a society, you also live for yourself. And that is exactly what I did. I failed. We all do. Now what next? The easier way is to obviously put the blame on someone else. I could have said I was involved in the wrong company. Hence, I did the wrong questionable thing and got kicked out of the first step. But the reality was, I did a mistake and I had to take bonus for it. But what about that mistake? And there's a thing about mistakes. In hindsight, if you realize, the greater the mistake you do, the more opportunity to learn from it. That is something that we often tend to ignore, but that is exactly what it poses. So I came back home, no school to go to, and my parents, to be honest, my mom's right here in the audience, uh, parents, to be honest, still thought that I, I did not tell them that I was writing a book. I would stay up through the night, write, come back, have a snack in the kitchen, and my mother still thought that I was on drugs. Because these were my munchies. Because I remember she telling my father to come ahead and have a little man-to-man -man conversation with me about the fact of me staying awake in late at night and what I was aiming towards to do. So I remember 7th July 2011 is when I got kicked out of my hostel. And 9th July 2012, I had the first book in hand. And that is when they realized this is what I was doing for that one year. And that is when I realized that one choice that I could have made the safe choice would have been to stay back at home, believe into what they said, probably join a school, not, I didn't go to school for a year, I continued writing secretly, went to Delhi, got published without their knowledge at all completely, and by this choice, I became an author accidentally. So wrote my debut novel at 17. The funny thing is, the same auntie, who was uh, gorging on my parents' money's butter chicken and making my life hell, was the first one to stand at the book launch and proclaim that this is because I inspired this kid to do best in his life. So, welcome to real life work, people. So, books kept on happening. So, the first book at 17, and this for someone who had never been part of the school editorial board, never gotten published in a newspaper or a magazine, and a direct book. Word of mouth spread and the book became a bestseller, selling one lakh copies in the first few months itself. And then obviously, I discovered accidentally what my wrong choice led to, which were other books, my passion for writing. And then I wrote two more books, which have all been bestsellers. And that's a fancy picture which no writer uses as an So the second wrong choice. Now, all was good in the hood. School had finally ended. Grade 12 had finished. I again scored a decent percentage. Obviously not good enough for this very college. But jokes apart, but at the same time, I had a big question in my mind. Now, I being the only son of a traditional business family from the city, had one option, since so there is never the second for a single son, which is to join the family business. Now, to join the family business essentially meant that I did a business degree and continued the line of being a builder, which clearly wasn't my passion. And my passion lay essentially with the fact that I wanted to become a writer. So, the second mistake that I did was choose a liberal arts college in Pune, which primarily till today I think collectively only three relatives in my entire extended family understand. For them, liberal arts continued to be a performing arts college where I probably learned sewing, knitting and dancing, which clearly looking at me, they must have realized was a waste at all. So, the third wrong choice. So, I started liberal arts uh, in college in Pune and second year into college, I got one random call from a production house in Mumbai stating that they wanted me to come and write on a TV, write on a TV show with them. Second year in college, Pune, chilling, life is going good, the books are doing well. I had a huge dilemma in my mind. Do I continue and uh, go ahead with what I am doing? 
because life is good i've still made my choices and i've got enough fame and popularity and life is good in pune it's good in college or do i take another wow. step or do i go ahead and mm-hmm. do a uh, venture into the unknown so i left college and ended up at mumbai 20 all by myself convincing my parents to give me one more chance and living on backlog which i believe most of us over here do but i did it for the right reasons performing for my wrong choice so i started writing tv for channel b i wrote this show called sada hak which uh, did extremely well and continued for 2 years and then one show led on to the other and as of today i have written for 10 television shows over 1300 episodes and around one and a half years of programming television yeah all of this simply because at 17 i made a mistake and i chose to own up to it and it led me to choose something that wasn't conventional which was wrong in terms of the society but i believed in it what interestingly also happened while i was writing my television shows was that i got nominated for my very first show sada hak in the indian telly awards and at that time i was 20 and till date i'm the youngest nominee in the best story category across the out 20 years of what have been there that led to another cool thing and i really like all these accolades because these are the only sanctions of you realizing that you know you can go a stray in life from the convention but then there are people recognizing it hd 30 under 30 happened last year last year and this was a very special award for me because this is around the same time i lost my father this was the last award that he saw me getting as a young achiever and that is when i realized you know i had i not taken that single step of going away from the conventional and choosing what my passion to relay in my father would have gone an uncertain man and that journey itself made me realize the importance of what it means to follow your heart and follow your passion so that basically gets me to a very important question who are you You know everyone keeps on talking about following your heart following your passion and trying to be different but the problem with us is that it's not important to be different it's important to be real and true to yourself and choices how many of you remember the maslow's hierarchy of needs we all had to cram through school yeah yeah nobody understood it i don't till today <laughs> reality doesn't change but it's a very technically based solution maslow's hierarchy of needs tells us essentially that we need to satiate all these needs in our life to achieve our optimum best and most of the choices that we make are based on these needs now because safety needs is at the second level that is where our evolution stops more often than not and that is exactly why we don't go ahead and fulfill our passions exactly my point hence it is so boring to be average and it is so boring to be right all the time and what's with this world called passion i'm going to quickly wrap up my talk by defining passion for all of you people passion according to me is not simply something that you believe in passion basically is something that you don't even have to formally be schooled in you learn it all by yourself become bloody good at it and have become so good at it that you can go ahead and teach it to someone that is your true passion and that is something everyone should inculcate and cultivate in their life because believe you me a true passion will take you to a long journey and i've started working for it's been 5 years since i've been working most of you will finish college soon you do not want a job in your life where you're wondering every friday why would monday come again and every monday waiting for friday to come and that is exactly how you should live your life thank you guys